Hello, people on it's I, a no name BT, here with another video, but this time without using myself, because I am going to be simply going over some of the highlighted cards and card series support coming up in KB15 or Dark Boot Dragon Pack. So it's going to be a quick little listing. There's no relative uh, rating for which is going to be the best, which is going to be the worst. These are going to be just simply 10 cards that I think that you should more than likely keep an eye on and expect to see in the upcoming format or any format in the future. Anyways, let's get right into it. Now, I said that there was no relative way of listing these cards, but starting us off, I'm going to possibly say one of the more annoying cards in the set, which is Skysaver Wish. It is a normal trap card for the Skysaver series, though of course, as always, it is generic. Simply by placing a Water Warrior and a Fairy or the Grave on top of your deck, you can place one monster your opponent's field to the bottom of the deck. When your opponent normal special summons a monster, then you can set Watch or Fusion. Now, this is, of course, no need for me to explain how good this is in comparison to second card on the top of the deck for your opponent to simply draw back into it. This can place any card or any monster your opponent's field onto the bottom of the deck, which means unless they shuffle their deck, they won't be able to get it back as soon. But also, this is a very much free and powerful interruption for the deck. Something that Sky Savior really didn't have, though of course you did have like the floodgates, you did have the blanket protection, you didn't have much in terms of interaction with your opponent on their turn. And this is definitely one of the more stronger trap cards that I've... Uh, seen in a good long while, especially that it is a out to maximum, it's out to fusion, it's out to basically anything with destruction protection. And not only that, it also got a fusion monster to support it, which is Glow Flare, the Sky Saver Shine, which is using Ranga as a fusion material, which is a big highlight for this, because Ranga is the Sky Saver monster that summons one of the two fairies from your grave, meaning that it can set itself up, and it has the effect to add back Sky Saver Wish to your hand or a, another monster, meaning that Skysaver Wish can be easily recycled and brought back as many times as you need for as many interruptions as you want. There's no need for me to keep on going about this, but just know that this is most definitely going to be one of the most tested decks or cards that I believe will be coming out of this set. Darkness Transamu Crisis. This is a little bit of a weirder one, though I am putting it in here because this is definitely something that is going to be getting future support and what I say or what I believe simply by trading three monsters you can destroy any card on your opponent's field then it can also gain attack which is relatively good as you might know from the past of uh, Rush Duel something like Heavy Metal was heavily played because it can simply pop a monster gain a bunch of attack lead to OTKs this is a little bit different as in it can pop any card in the field and it also is a Dark Galaxy level 8, and those, as you know, are very much supported. And it does have its own support card, which is Darkness Doom Giant. If you don't know, Darkness Dwarf is also a, a low-level monk effects monster that can fusion summon without a fusion spell, meaning that you can use Giant to get back Crisis, and then you can use it as three tributes, two or three tributes, to bring out Crisis and pop a card for free. There's a large amount of setup for this, and I do believe that this is going to help give a little bit extra push towards mixing light and dark galaxies, though as you may know if you've seen competitive Rush Duel, dark galaxy, light galaxy, they have been fairly split, and they do see a little bit of play, though this is not going to be enough to get them to tier 1, but this is going to be something that will get them in a good direction into getting further into the format and possibly away from depending on uh, parallel order deck building. Darkness Galactica Oblivion. Now this is going to be a little bit of connecting towards the previous one as it is also part of the Darkness Dwarf as a material, but I am putting this as its own because it is basically kind of important on its own part, as I keep on saying. So Darkness Galactica Oblivion is a very simple monster to get out. Just simply have Oblivion Field and Darkness Dwarf, which once again, Dwarf sets up its materials and then it can make any monster with 100 or more original attack points set to zero, and that means any monster, including a max monster, with no level limit. And not only that, it also negates the continuous effect of that. So all those pesky solitaire players out there with their obsidian magicians will simply go straight down to zero and can't use their effects, and not only that, it will also negate the effect of maximum monsters, specifically the continuous effects. Can also negate other things, but I'm gonna be honest, I don't think you're negating Vanity's Fiend unless you summon this out before. Even then, if your opponent summons Vanity's Fiend while this is on board, I think you're already winning. 
Surging Wave Swordsman Onimaru Kunai. It is basically one of the many new fish cards. Of course, I'm going to have a fish card on this listing. Uh, not because I'm pretty much always loving fish, it is because there is actual potential for the deck, though I'm not going to say it's going to be completely meta viable right away. Definitely a little bit more support, depending on, you know, more different type of win conditions would definitely help the deck, but this is still something to keep a note of. Basically, uh, this is the Surging Wave boss monster, and it just gives blanket card effect protection to all of your monsters. But that is not all, it also has a evolved form, which is a fusion monster using Hydro Minigun, Bluefish, and itself, with the same effect except it gains piercing. Now, basically, it's a 3k body with protection, and it gives that protection to all of your fish, which is pretty good, but the main reason that this can also be very effective is because of Wave Fusion, which, if you have five or more waters in grave, Fusion Summon, it's basically a miracle fusion for fish. So, it's a relatively easy way to get out big bodies, and having a big body that gives everything protection, as said, it is pretty still pretty much good. There's a lot of cards these days that have a lot of free popping monsters, uh, popping cards. This definitely will give them a little bit of protection, but it won't be enough to get them to tier 1. Continuing on the fish train, yay! Uh, we have Fish Depth Charge. This was one of the longest awaited cards, as we have had this teased a couple of months back, though we were just waiting for the remainder of the fish support to get revealed. This is a very powerful card, which honestly, most of us are surprised it is a non-legend card. You can play three of this in your deck, simply by sending a fish to the grave when your opponent activates a spell or summons a monster. Destroy a card and then draw one card. Once again, destroy any card on the field, including a monster and back row. So this is a really good interruption, and the currently new fish cards that's coming out on the set as well make it pretty viable. Not only that, it also has two support cards in Carrier Manta Ray and Charge Remora. Now, Ray isn't really going to be that dependable, though you might see some people play it specifically just for the mill, but Charge Remora is going to be the more commonly used way of recycling your fish depth charge, because, you know, it gives you a monster and it's guaranteed to get you back your fish depth charge. Now, this is a really good card. Once again, fish might need a little bit more, just a secondary win, new type of win condition that's going to really push them to getting out there. But fish depth charge is definitely one thing that fish desperately needed was a very powerful interruption and one that you can use multiple times a turn, one that you can play three copies of, recyclable. It is an extremely powerful card. And if you are not playing around it or you just don't have anything to out it, that's going to make it a really difficult game for you. <laughs> now lastly, in terms of card series support, we have some cards for worms. Though, weirdly enough, it is not what you think it is. So of course, uh, the main worm card I want to point up is Autumn Leaves of Blistopia, the final season of the Blistopia field spells, and it is very powerful. Placing one worm on the top of the deck in order to activate it, then it gives all worms 300 attack and piercing. I cannot tell you how much needed this is. Uh, first off, having an activation effect of placing a worm on top of the deck means that you can now stack the deck and act by milling a worm with all of your worm related monsters, you can guarantee to activate the effects, which has been a real big problem with worms in the past. Not only that, and them having no way to deal damage to a large sum of defense position monsters besides Escaworm, Dig for uh, Crank to 10, or uh, Tension Max, whatever you might call it. This is a very powerful field spell and definitely is going to give the deck a little edge. Not only that, they also got Darkness Phantomite. Uh, I'm not really pointing this card out for the fusion monster rel relatively, but as a general worm card, this is really pretty good. Basically, giving your deck three copies of a Book of Moon-like effect, flipping down a level 9 or lower monster, meaning you can close down floodgates, you can close down monster with protection, as said earlier with uh, the fusion pitch black surge wave. It's definitely something that worms really appreciate, you know, because they do well more against face down cards, and especially with the new field spell, you can now deal piercing damage to set monsters. And I do have a lot more hope for worms, though I don't think they're going to take a tier 1. They can definitely make it higher in rogue, possibly a tier 2, depending on, like, depending on what else they have to fight through <laughs> in this current day and age, but worms definitely have the best legacy supports in terms of anime-based decks. 
Okay, and now we're getting closer to the end of the video for the last three cards. They are going to be three free agent cards, aka very generic cards, which don't relatively have a specific card series that they belong to. They are just random things in the set. So the first up is Maid's Mischief. You mill two cards, you shuffle two cards from your opponent's brain in the deck, then you draw cards to number of level 7 effect monsters shuffled by this effect. I know what people are going to say, this is a very specific card. If you're not playing against a deck with level 7 effect monsters, it's effectively just shuffle two, mill two. Now, that's very true, and that is still a very decent effect. That's something that a lot of people would still want, even though it's somewhat dependent on your opponent having a monster in their grave. But in formats where level 7 effect monsters are going to be most common to see, this is definitely going to be something you want to side deck. Even worst case scenario, this might be something in a main deck. I can imagine in early Ryuma, this would definitely have been a 3 of in every deck. It's just a generally good card, uh, though most of you do play online. If you do have it, play a uh, physical version of it, you know, maybe getting some mischief might be good, maybe not. It's mostly just future case. It's definitely something that will come up at some point in a format. I can't say in the upcoming format, as you probably know, it's going to be very mixed with a new set. Salvage! Yes, of course I'm going to highlight the legend card of the set. Though some may argue that this is going to be fish support, you do not fully understand the extent of salvage. It is add two water monsters with dinner or less attack to your grave to the hand. That means any water monster. One of the high, uh, more uh, known things is going to be playing a fish, sea serpent, all that. But the main thing to point out is that this also works with sky savers as all of your important fusion materials happen to be warrior monsters and you don't have that many recovery cards and they also have a lot of low attack points. So basically add two cards from Grave to Hand, any water deck, this is going to be a huge card, especially in the future when more water decks eventually get added to Rush Duel. This is going to be insane. Even now, this is a pretty powerful card, though, as always, it is up to the person playing the deck to choose what kind of Legend Spell card that they want to use, Legend Trap card and all that. But I will say that this is going to be a large part of the game. You're probably going to see a little bit in competitive early on. I can't say much about... Uh, later down the line as people more get solid decks and have a common build. Though I did say 10, I did happen to miss a card on the listing which is going to be Star Salvation Shield. Basically a normal trap card which you can activate during the draw phase or when your opponent summons a monster. Your opponent can only attack once that turn, meaning that if you have a single monster that can attack multiple times, that monster can only attack once in all they get one attack. This could be a very strong stall card or it can be a snatch steal if Ryuma happens to come back, or as most people know, Wonder Fusion. Though this isn't the most powerful card, it is still something that's going to be very annoying to play against. And finally, for the last card, we have Fusion Cancel. Yes, the very last card that was revealed in the set, card number 66. Gotta love it. Now, I might be one of the few people that are probably going to overhype this. I am saying like this is not going to be a main meta staple, though. Depending, once again, depending on the format, this might see a little bit of side deck play, especially against some particular decks. Fusion Cancel is basically a battle trap. Once a monster dies by battle, return fusion monster in the field to the extra deck, then summon its materials. But it must be all of its materials. So basically, it can either remove a monster your opponent controls, or it can bounce one of your monsters, and then the controller of that monster summons their materials from Grave. So the main thing to keep note about this is that it requires you to summon all monsters. So if your opponent has three monsters on field and you return a fusion monster, they can't summon anything because they need to summon all the list of materials, including something a good example would be Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. If you would bounce with Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, you cannot act resummon anything because you don't have three Blue Eyes White Dragon engrave unless they happen to make something that counts as Blue Eyes White Dragon engrave. <laughs> so this isn't going to be that huge of card, though it is still something that you want to you know, think about, play around. If your opponent does side in, take a little bit of caution. It's very unlikely that they're going to be playing this, though it is something that you just want to keep a note of and be aware that it exists. Well, guys, that is the end of my discussion on KP15. This is once again going to seem like a very interesting format, though I'm a little bit of fearful of how much support Skysaver is going to be getting in this set. <laughs> though, nonetheless, I'm very excited for it with all the new fusions, all the... Uh, new water support, all the new fish, 
basically just a lot part of this set is going to seem like a lot of fun. And of course you don't have to play competitive if you don't want to, this is mainly just a listing of cards that you want to be most wary of and is not fully guaranteed to be part of the competitive scene because as you know Rush Duels is very unknowing in what you can expect to come out on top. But I hope you all enjoyed and if you like this video go ahead and like or just say down below whichever you feel like. And I'll see y'all next time.